So I am currently in the process of lowering this car. This is my 1995 BMW 525i. It is an E34 chassis car. And in an attempt to be a responsible car owner in the process of doing something as irresponsible as ruining suspension on a perfectly good car, I'm attempting to identify all the worn out suspension components that have definitely reached their expiration date. And one of those components that I have elected to repair that will be taken care of in this video is this fun little piece of engineering. Uh, this is the rear pitman arm. You'll frequently see it referred to as the rear dog bone in a lot of forums and stuff. And to explain how this really works and why it's really important to replace when it wears out, uh, we're gonna climb under the car and talk about what it does and how it works and all the steps that it takes to go ahead and replace it. So we're under the rear of the car here. We are from the front of the car looking back. So the back of the car is down this way. But this is the part we're replacing here. And as you can see, this is totally shot. Like there is no life left in that. And it's very likely that your car looks the same. But with that in mind, what, why is this important? Uh, and to understand that, we first kind of need to generally understand how the rear suspension works in this car. Basically what we have, uh, if you're familiar with BMWs, this is a little bit more of an old school rear suspension design. It's basically like a rear trailing arm, but in the profile of a more modern lower control arm. And what I mean by that is instead of pivoting like this, like a normal lower control arm would be where our pivot runs parallel to the car, our pivot actually runs across this way. So the whole piece kind of moves like that with our pivot running perpendicular to the car. So this arm is trailing behind the pivot up here. Uh, and the pivot mounts in two places. There's one mount all the way up in here and the other mounts right up here, which is right where the pitman arm mounts to this trailing arm slash lower control arm hybrid combo thing. Now, typically with a trailing arm type suspension, we just have one long trailing arm that runs from up here where it mounts the car all the way back to the hub here. And there's another lower control arm that mounts to stabilize that trailing arm at the hub. But this car varies from that in the sense that this is a stubby little trailing arm and that, that's our full range right there. And there's no lower control arm to stabilize it up here. And that's basically where this piece comes in is it helps deal with all the lateral forces on the car uh, through corners and stuff. And it helps keep all of our joints nice and tight. And it's almost like the engineers, this was an afterthought for them. Uh, it was kind of a necessity that they ran into during suspension tuning uh, later in the design process. And I say that because you can almost get away with just this and not having this. I mean, obviously this is totally shot and it's not really doing its job very well. You wouldn't really know unless you did a little before and after kind of drive. But the, the, the triangle we have going on here is almost good enough, but apparently not quite, which is why the engineers added this on later in the design process. So that is generally what this piece does and why it's important. It stabilizes our lateral forces when we load it up in the corner. And so replacing this should tighten up our rear suspension, make it feel a little more controlled and it, it shouldn't heave around as much, especially when you hit bumps in the corners and have the car rolling around. It should be much more planted and much more stable. So with that all in mind, uh, let's go ahead and jump into replacing this. So here's everything that we need to do this job. Uh, I'm using a breaker bar. This should make it a lot easier. You might be able to get away with just a socket wrench here. Uh, you're also gonna need a 22 millimeter open wrench. Uh, well, the box end of the open wrench and a 22 millimeter socket. And I would recommend using a half inch drive uh, for this job because these are gonna be pretty stuck on there and you're gonna need some larger tools to get this job done. But that should be everything that we need. So the first step is you're gonna to need to get the rear of your car in the air, obviously. And I'm using ramps to do this. The reason that I would recommend this is because your rear suspension is going to need to be loaded. Uh, one, to remove the old arm and to reinstall the new one. And that's because this arm pivots. I mean, obviously it's mounting up to our lower control arm and that whole piece moves. And when you have the car up in the air, that drops way down. So that whole piece twists and none of your bolts are gonna line up quite straight. Uh, when you go to do the job. So you, this has to be under load and ramps are the safest way to do this. I would not recommend putting a jack under the rear to pick up the tire after you have the car in the air. Not really safe. So climbing back under the car here, these two bolts aren't quite the same. This one threads directly into our control arm here and this one actually threads into a nut 
that's up on the top of this flange. We'll get to that in just a moment. We're gonna start by just breaking this one loose and then we will jump over to this. So that one's broken loose. So at this point we should be able to get that out the rest of the way with the socket wrench. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and break this one loose as well. And I'll try to show you that nut and the best angle to get on that with our 22 millimeter wrench here. So this is fairly difficult to get a good angle on. We are currently looking from the back of the car forwards, uh, just for reference. You can see this is our flange here that this part of the dog bone mounts up to and our nut is right here. I am touching it with the tip of my finger and that's where we need to feed our wrench up into. And on this side, um, it looks like the best way to get to it is to feed up through here and get the wrench up on top there. We are working around some wires and or parking brake cables. So I will get the wrench situated and I will come back when I have it on there just to show you what angle we're working with. So here we are, we have the wrench situated on the nut and I fed through from behind our control arm up and over and I am holding the wrench perpendicular to the car. So if that's facing forward to back, our wrench is facing left to right. And this is the best way to hold it here. We are getting up and over this brake line and up and over this wheel speed sensor and we are securely on the nut. And we'll go ahead and break this bolt loose. There we go. All right, and with that started, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my socket wrench and drive these both out the rest of the way and we'll come back when we are ready to pull this off and slip the new one in. All right, so now this is ready to come out. Uh, you can see everything's nice and loose. Go ahead and pull that one out. Go ahead and spin this one out the rest of the way and this should come right on down like so. And there we go. So this is our complete assembly as it came out of the car. On this end, this is the end that went directly into our control arm itself. That is the shorter bolt with the washer that goes between the pitman arm and the control arm. And then on the other side, our long bolt is the one that threads through the flange and then threads into this nut here. So just keep that in mind so we don't mix up our hardware and it'll go back in exactly as it came out. So this is Brayden from the future here and I just wanted to mention a couple of differences uh, in regards to the order of hardware on the other side of the car. This is the right side of the car. And the first most noticeable difference is this support structure piece here uh, that runs across. That doesn't really change much, but there is also on this bolt, this is the bolt that bolts up through the flange into the nut on the top end. There is a washer that goes between this bolt and this support piece here. And there is also another washer that goes up top between the top edge of the flange and the nut. So that's the only differences on this side. Uh, other than that, everything else is the same. Torques are the same. Everything looks the same. So this is our new Pitman arm. Uh, we will take all of our old hardware. We will go bolt, arm, washer and we'll climb onto the car go ahead and get this one started and then we'll put this bolt in so back under here we'll go ahead and get this one threaded in and now that that's seated we'll rotate this around you might have to bend things around a bit uh, these are little ball joints here so they will twist and now we'll go ahead and stick this bolt in and you might have to again twist it around a little bit to to get that hole lined up because it's not going to be perfectly lined up. And once you get it started, you can give it a smack and now we'll thread the nut up on the top end. So we've got everything back in and snugged up and the very last thing you're going to want to do is torque both of these bolts to 94 foot pounds and then you're done. So that's all it takes to replace the rear pitman arm slash dog bones in a BMW E34. Definitely recommend checking up on yours because uh, they are very frequently failed and you don't even really realize it because they, they do play a small role. But having replaced them you should be able to tell a significant improvement in the, the rear stability of the car. And it should feel a lot tighter in the rear, especially when 
the car is, is going over bumps through a corner. And honestly, it's a really easy job uh, to do yourself. Just need a set of ramps and some basic hand tools and you should be able to get it done yourself as well. So if you found this helpful at all, feel free to subscribe and uh, I'll be making more videos like this in the future. And there will be a video coming out shortly on lowering this car and what that entails. So if you're interested in that, definitely stick around and uh, that'll be coming out soon. So until then, get your next video.